Atlantic Canada's new space race begins after Ottawa's investment. Picture this, rockets launching from the rugged coastlines of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, Canadian-made satellites orbiting Earth, and our nation finally establishing itself as a serious player in the global space industry. This isn't science fiction anymore. This is happening right now, and the federal government just put nearly $200 million behind it. Prime Minister Mark Carney's first budget pledges approximately $200 million over the next three years to establish a sovereign space launch capability 24. That's right, Canada is going to space, and Atlantic Canada is leading the charge. But here's where it gets really interesting. This isn't just about launching rockets. This is about national sovereignty, economic transformation, and a fundamental shift in how Canada sees itself in the modern world. Hey there, welcome back to Maple and Eagle, the channel where Canadian news meets global perspective. I'm your host, and today we're diving into something absolutely extraordinary that's happening right now in Atlantic Canada. While most people are focused on earthly concerns, a historic space race is unfolding on Canada's eastern shores, and it's backed by a massive investment from Ottawa that could change everything. Let me break down what's actually happening on the ground. Right now, two major players are competing to build Canada's first commercial spaceports. Nord Space is constructing infrastructure in St. Lawrence, Newfoundland, and Labrador, while Maritime Launch Services is building near Canso, Nova Scotia b and Bloomberg. Think about that for a moment. Two small communities in Atlantic Canada are about to become Canada's gateways to space. The CEO of Nord Space, Rahul Gohl, couldn't hide his excitement when he talked about the budget announcement. He called, seeing it specifically mentioned in the Canadian budget, a huge vote of confidence SEP 24. And honestly, when you look at Canada's space history, this is unprecedented. We've always been the supporting actor in space exploration, building the Canadarm, contributing technology, but never actually launching our own missions from our own soil. That's all about to change. The proposed federal spending amounts to about $60 million per year SEP 24, and as Steve Mattier, CEO of Maritime Launch Services, pointed out, this kind of budget allocation for launch capabilities has never been done before in Canada. We're witnessing history in the making, folks. But let's talk about the timeline, because this is where things get really ambitious. Ottawa wants a functioning spaceport built and firing rockets by 2028 C-24. That's just over three years away. As Goal himself acknowledged, that's record speed for what Canadian companies need to deliver. This isn't a decades-long project. This is a sprint to establish Canada as a spacefaring nation before the end of this decade. Now, you might be wondering, why Atlantic Canada? Why these specific locations? The answer is both simple and strategic. Geography matters in space launches. The eastward rotation of Earth means launching from the east coast gives rockets a natural boost. Plus, launching over the Atlantic Ocean is safer than launching over populated areas. These communities aren't just convenient, they're ideal. But building a launch pad is only part of the equation. The real challenge, the real technological hurdle, is building Canadian rockets capable of reaching orbit. Mathieu was frank about this difficulty, describing the creation of small or medium launchers as genuinely risky, high-cost ventures. He projects that much of Ottawa's money will be sent to companies trying to solve that launcher problem, Quentin 24. This is where the competition gets interesting. Both companies believe they're well positioned to receive federal funding. And here's the beautiful part, they might both be right. Goal expects and hopes the money will be split between multiple companies to create more competition in the space sector and draw in private investment Q24. Competition drives innovation, and innovation is exactly what Canada needs if we're going to catch up to established space powers. Let's talk about what this means for jobs and the economy. Nord Space is working on building not just launch pads, but rockets and satellites too. Their goal is explicitly about maximizing jobs and value in Canada. We're not talking about importing foreign technology. We're talking about Canadian engineering, Canadian manufacturing, Canadian innovation. For Atlantic provinces that have historically struggled with economic diversification and young people leaving for opportunities elsewhere, this represents a potential transformation. Imagine growing up in a small town in Newfoundland or Nova Scotia and having the opportunity to work in aerospace engineering without leaving your home province. Imagine the ripple effects on education, 
with young people pursuing STEM careers because they see a real future in their own backyard. This is about more than rockets. This is about reversing decades of economic challenges and brain drain. Now, I should mention that this journey hasn't been smooth sailing. Nord Space had to scrub several launch attempts back in August and September. But rather than seeing this as failure, Goal framed it as valuable learning experiences that will push them closer to their goals. That's the spirit of exploration right there. Every setback is data. Every failure is a lesson. But this space race isn't happening in isolation. It's part of a larger strategic vision. This funding is part of Carney's push for a defense industrial strategy C-24. In an increasingly uncertain world, where geopolitical tensions are rising and technological capabilities determine national power, having sovereign launch capacity isn't just nice to have. It's essential. Think about it. Right now, if Canada wants to launch a satellite, we're dependent on other countries. We have to book time on foreign rockets, follow their schedules, and trust their priorities align with ours. With our own launch capability, Canada gains independence. We can launch our own satellites for communications, Earth observation, climate monitoring, and yes, defense purposes on our own timeline. Goal emphasized that sovereignty in space is being prioritized for the first time BNN Bloomberg. This represents a fundamental shift in Canadian policy. We're no longer content to be space tourists. We want to be space operators. The global context makes this even more urgent. The commercial space industry is booming worldwide. Companies and countries that establish themselves now will shape the rules and norms for decades to come. China is aggressively expanding its space program. Private companies like SpaceX have revolutionized the industry. India just became the fourth country to land on the moon. Canada can't afford to be left behind. And here's something crucial. The $60 million in yearly spending is significant, but not so much that it could sustain several companies completely cap 24. This federal investment is designed to be seed money, to catalyze private investment, to prove that Canadian space ventures are viable. If these companies succeed, they'll attract more capital, create more jobs, and establish Canada as a legitimate player in a multi-billion dollar global industry. The companies involved understand this. Nord Space proudly emphasizes that they're 100% Canadian owned. They're betting their future on Canadian capability Canadian talent, and Canadian determination. That's a bet I hope pays off. Looking ahead, federal officials still need to lay out exactly how they'll divide this funding and what specific milestones they expect. Both companies are waiting for those details, but they're not waiting to move forward. They're building, testing, learning, and preparing for the moment when Canadian rockets rise from Canadian soil. This story represents something deeper about Canada's identity and ambitions. For too long, we've been comfortable in our role as a middle power, as a supporter rather than a leader. But in the 21st century, in an era defined by technological advancement and space exploration, playing it safe isn't an option. The countries and companies that push boundaries will shape the future. Canada is finally stepping up to that challenge. Atlantic Canada, often seen as economically disadvantaged compared to central Canada, that's poetic justice and smart strategy all at once. These provinces have the geography, they're developing the infrastructure, and now they have federal backing. The question isn't whether Canada can compete in space. The question is how far and how fast we're willing to go. This is Maple and Eagle signing off. If you found this deep dive into Canada's space ambitions valuable, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next story. Share your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Canada can become a major space power? Should we be investing more in space exploration? I want to hear from you. Until next time, keep looking up, because Canada's future might just be among the stars.